Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us gather all in prayer. 
Lord, receive this worship this morning as a sign of our love for you. In the midst of it, may the Holy Spirit grab us powerfully and send us out into the world to be your people now and forever. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. I'll invite children forward for a children's sermon. Pastor Sherry's got a children's sermon for you today. Anybody out here? Come on out. Come on, Zeke. Gabe, you're not going Hello, to hello. Anyone else? All right. Well, I'm actually, you don't have to get very comfortable because we're going to get up and move around here just a little bit, all right? But I have a question for you. So do either of you like stories or maybe cartoons where there are kids who get to solve mysteries? And maybe like they get to find clues. Do you like some of those? Um, what, do you, what do you like to watch? Is, do you watch, is Blue's Clues still on TV? Yeah, okay. I was gonna say Blue's Clues is, what one, is one of the ones that um, some other younger ones in my life like to watch. I, when I was growing up, there was a book called Encyclopedia Brown. Any other readers of Encyclopedia Brown? Oh, well, that is just a tragedy that we'll have to fix this summer. Book group, okay. Well, in Encyclopedia Brown, there was this really smart, really, he watched things, he knew every, everything that was kind of around him, and he could solve mysteries by looking at the clues. All right, so I want you guys to stand up, because we're going to go on a little bit of a, a mystery hunt or a clues seeking. I want you to look around, all in this room, up in the, the chancel area, out in the congregation, all around us, and tell me if you see things today that are different from last week. Do you see anything that's different? What's, a, what's something? The white bowl. The white bowl. Well, you really aren't. You could be an encyclopedia about That's a really tiny little thing. That might have been here last week, but maybe not. We don't know. All right. Anything else? How about something that isn't white? Do you see another color around a lot of? Do you see a lot of a color? Red. Red. There's a lot of red. Look, there's red out there. There's red up here. I'm wearing red. The flowers. Okay, that's a good one. How about... How about anything that you see over here? Do you know what any of these things are? What does this look like? It's a bird. That's right. And there's one right there. That's a dove. How about this? Can you tell what this is? Do you know what that might be? It's fire. It's fire. Exactly. And there's fire up there. There's fire all around. There's doves all around. There's red all around. You guys are good clues finders. That's awesome. Well, what I want to tell you about today is the reason that you see all these things that are just a little different today is that we're celebrating a big, exciting day in the church called Pentecost. And then Pentecost, when we put the red out, we put the doves up, we put the fire out and the flowers, and we're going to celebrate the fact that the Spirit, and I'm going to say a little more about that, the Holy Spirit is with us. The other thing that we sometimes think about when we think about Spirit is something like breath. Or wind. So I want you to look around and tell me, can you see the breath? No, I can't see the breath either. That's good. If it was cold enough to see our breath, that would be bad on Pentecost Sunday. All right, so we can't see the breath, but you know how else we might notice that that wind or that breath is here? Were you listening to the band singing, the worship leaders singing, and all the congregation? So they were using their breath, and they were making joyful noise with that, right? You could hear it. You couldn't see it, but you could hear it. And you could hear the instruments. And how about if you were to walk out today and someone said, I'm so glad to see you this morning. I hope you have a wonderful day. They'd be using their breath also, wishing you a greeting. That's kind of a, a promise of that as well. Maybe they would say to you, peace be with you. Peace be with you. That's one of the things that we think about on Pentecost is that we use our breath because God blesses it to say peace to one another. All right? All right, so I'm going to have you, before you head out to um, Sunday school, to children's ministry, right? I'm going to have you lift your hands and wave them through the air a little bit. See if you can feel the, can you feel the air a little bit around them? All right. And now you're going to go like this, and we're going to say, peace be with you. Ready? Peace be with you. Could you feel it? Could you feel it? Do you think they need to do it one more time? All right, maybe we'll do it a little bit. Just try to get it a little farther, right? We think we probably got the people in the first couple of rows. But we're going to try to get it all the way to the back of the church. You ready? Peace be with you. That was really good. I could see the breath going all the way back there. Your promised breath. You're carrying out into the world the peace that God gives us as well. 
All right, you guys were awesome clue finders and mystery solvers. I hope you have a wonderful Pentecost. Have a great day. We continue with the reading of the lessons. Good morning. Today's reading is from Psalm 104, and it's read responsively. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you've made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. And there go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they're dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they're created and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles? Who touches the mountain and they smoke? I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, Lord O oh my soul. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So reading from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a vile, violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunks, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Please stand as we welcome our gospel on this festival day. Gracious Spirit, heed our pleading, fashion us all anew. It's your leading that we're needing, help us to follow. this day comes from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Glory to you, o Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Guide our thinking and our speaking, done in your holy name. Motivate all in their seeking, freeing from guilt and shame. Come, come, come Holy Spirit, come. discernment, nor rootless liberty, turn disquiet to contentment, doubt into certainty. I preached from up there the last service and I found out that the, the ribbons were right in the direction where I couldn't see folks. So I'm going to try this instead. This is great. It is wonderful to be back with you. I have missed being a part of this community and look forward to the, the days of summer that we almost begin today as we uh, journey forward. It's lovely to be with you again. Some of you may have heard, although it's not very well known in the United States, there is this great big music festival called Greenbelt 
in England. And music festival maybe isn't even enough of a way to describe it. It is a gathering um, that kind of where people come and they are, they sing, they do the arts. It's a place of talking about the spirit in their lives. They talk about justice and peace. Um, and it just has this long tradition of being a place where people gather to sort of discern what God may be calling them to do and to celebrate um, the creation with music and the arts. Some years ago, they brought a version of Greenbelt to the United States, and it also kind of is a gathering, very similar music in the arts and justice and peace, and it takes place in North Carolina over a couple of weeks every year, nestled kind of into that area where you can see the Blue Ridge Mountains on the in the distance, and is just a beautiful spirit-nurturing location. Now, the one that is here in the United States isn't called Greenbelt. It is called Wild Goose. And you may ask yourself, what is behind that particular title? What does it mean, the Wild Goose or Wild Goose Festival? And if you were asking that question, I will give you a little hint. These are your own set of clues today. A little hint that today is the perfect day to ask that question. <clears throat> When the kids and I were looking for clues around the Holy Spirit, one of the things we saw up here were a couple of pictures of a dove. And a, the dove is one of the primary symbols of the Holy Spirit we use in the Western church. We think of it as a, a, um, a creature that reminds us maybe of softness and gentleness. We think of it as an image of the Spirit bringing peace and quietness and the chance to reflect and heal and restore. But I learned that there is another bird that has been used as a symbol for the spirit in the church, especially this one in Celtic Christianity, and that is the goose. The wild goose, in fact. And I will give you a moment to think how different your images of the Holy Spirit might be if you think of what characteristics of that bird might lend themselves to our understanding of the spirit um, in addition to the dove. Geese don't coo. They honk. They make a mess. They make some noise. They disrupt things. People use them as guard animals. Because if you get one into a corner, you could get bitten by its stubbornness and its unwillingness to yield. Those who, who study such things say that the reason why geese fly in the formation, that, that familiar V-shaped um, formation that we see them in in the sky, the reason they fly that way is because they can fly faster and farther together rather than an, a single goose on its way, in part because the geese in the back are making a racket the whole time they're up there, honking and encouraging and motivating and trying to keep the whole group together to see where it might go. Of course, all of our images of the Holy Spirit, all of these symbols, the fire, the dove, the goose, anything we might use, we use because getting our hands around the mystery of the Spirit is so hard. But we still believe there's something in those symbols that can tell us and teach us about this Spirit presence in our lives. <clears throat> On the festival of Pentecost, we hear the same story from the book of Acts every single year, whenever we come to hear it. We hear the story of those who are gathered in Jerusalem 50 days after the resurrection, although it's not because of the resurrection they're actually gathered there. They're gathered 50 days after the Passover. Because the Pentecost festival that the disciples, the followers, the friends, the, the, um, all of those who kind of have come with Jesus through this, this mission time in the mission field, they are all gathered in Jerusalem because that's where their Jewish siblings come every year to celebrate this great ancient festival in the Jewish tradition. Pentecost was a time of remembering the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, a time when they felt as if God journeyed with them in the, um, in, during, through the exodus in the wilderness, in the desert, and brought them all together, gathered them up to be a part of God's new community, something God was doing in the world. But as they are all gathered in Jerusalem for the story we hear today, this particular Pentecost festival, <clears throat> something 
familiar is happening, and yet something new is happening as well. They begin to see the the flames, the tongue of flames dancing on the heads of those around them. They hear the proclamation and the stories and the witness to what God is doing in all these languages um, that, that they didn't realize they would have a chance to hear their own language spoken in that place. They hear also and possibly feel the rush of the wind blowing through that community. And they feel like something new is happening, something different, something both connected to the past and to the future. And that's exactly the point that Peter makes when he stands up in the midst of that community. He doesn't start out by saying, this is nothing you've ever experienced or heard of before. What he says is, this is what the prophet Joel was telling us about. This is what we learned about so long ago, this, the sending and receiving of the Spirit. This is like when Joel said, I will pour out, says God, my Spirit on all of those um, who gather. And in fact, really, that prophecy from Joel is about all of those. You hear this prophet, your, your children will prophesy. Your young adults, your youth and young adults, they will see visions. Your older adults, the wise ones among you, they will dream dreams. And anyone who has been formally, formally excluded or pushed to the margins or not been a part of that, upon all of them, everyone, says God, I will pour my spirit <coughs> in those days. We often call this day the birthday of the church we celebrate that something happened in that day in Jerusalem, that something happened on that Pentecost day, and that the, the, the group of followers who were previously sort of this ragtag, disconnected, loosely, or loosely connected group of followers of Jesus, that on that day, they became something different. They had this new shared origin story of who they were called to go out into the world as one, to journey as one, and to share the message of Christ in the world. But even though it is in one way a birthday and in one way something new, Peter is still saying in some ways it's an adoption. It's being made part in a new way of this old, old story, of this old, old community. It's been a little while, I said, since I, since I was with you. I was here a lot during Lent and Easter, so we kind of needed to kind of balance things out a little bit. I'm glad to be back here on, on the, the Sunday of Pentecost. But in the, in the intervening time, I took a new call, a day call. It doesn't impact my ability to be with you on Sundays, but took a new call to Trinity Lutheran Seminary on the, on the, um, as a, that's part of Capital University. And I've only been there a couple of weeks, and what people keep saying to me is, oh, it must be great to be back. And that's such a tricky thing, because in many ways, of course, it is about being back. It's a familiar context. Not everything is new. Pastor Carl and I were students there in the 90s. I was on the staff there from 2006 to 2013. So there is a lot that is really familiar about being back in that place. And yet, the winds of the Spirit are blowing anew in that location. They are leading down those hallways. They are filling up the classrooms. They are blowing through the worship spaces. And the winds of the Spirit are doing something new. So in some ways, I'm not back. I'm there for what new thing the Spirit may have in mind for the faculty and the staff and the students and the larger community of that place. <clears throat> when Peter stands up in today's um, story from Acts, and he's trying to, beginning to interpret what is happening in that area, or um, with, around them as the Spirit is blowing in that place, there are some who stand on the sidelines and sneer and say, they must be filled with new wine. And Peter defends what is happening there and says, it is not new wine, it is only nine o'clock in the morning. When you hear that phrase about new wine, it might sound familiar to you. If we wanted to, we could flip back into the Gospel of Luke. Luke and Acts are connected. They are kind of come out of the same creative moment. The same evangelist tells these two stories. And back in Luke, we could go back and we would see the story where Jesus is talking about 
what is happening as he's calling the disciples. And one of the things he says is, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. It will break them open. It will rupture and the wine, the new wine will spill. If I were there, I think I might step up and say to Peter, I don't know. Maybe they are filled with new wine. Maybe this is another image of the Spirit, that the wine just breaks open any container we might have thought to put it in. Any box or constriction of the Holy Spirit we might think we know and understand, and that Spirit breaks it open. Those old wineskins do rupture. The new wine does flow. I would also say, it may only be 9 o'clock in the morning, but it is Holy Spirit time somewhere. <laughs> or anywhere. Or everywhere, in fact. One final story. As my very first call in, on the west side of Cleveland, we were a part of a group of three congregations, and we did some kind of cohort things together. And one of the things we did together is we had three um, special services during the year when we would get folks from all three of those congregations together. We would do that on All Saints, Epiphany, and Ascension. Ascension was about a week and a half ago. And Ascension is the day when we hear the story kind of that comes right before this one where Jesus rises into the heavens, right? And as there is a tradition in some places in the church that when that Paschal candle is lit, the Christ candle up there is lit, that it, it's lit through Easter. And then as the person proclaiming the gospel for Ascension Day reads of Jesus being lifted up, the acolyte comes forward and snuffs the candle as the congregation watches, to indicate that Christ is with us in a different way now after this story. I always wanted to go to the grocery store and gather up a handful of those little birthday candles that you give to someone and you light, and when they blow them out, they light right back up again. And I thought, I'm going to sneak into the sacristy on the the, the the day before we, we gather around the service, and I'm going to find a way to kind of instill, like kind of drill little holes and put all those little birthday candles around the candle flame on the Christ candle. And when that acolyte comes forward and snuffs it and walks away as if their work is done, whoosh, the candle would light right back up again. Promise that we cannot ever extinguish that. I will tell you, and I, Tyler's not in the room, but I never did that mostly because I was afraid of the worship leader. But I'd do it today if, if I had the opportunity. And even though I think that would be a magnificent celebration of the persistent, goose-like quality of the Holy Spirit that is relentless and restless and does not leave us alone and drives us out to wherever God might be calling us, even though I think that eternally lighting flame could be a really interesting image of that. To be honest, I think I like the image we're going to do today even better. Because the thing that conveys the light of Christ, the presence of the Spirit, out into the world is not the birthday candles that continue to light. It's those of us in this room. It is the spirit that sends us, and maybe sometimes it sends us like a dove, surrounding us with gentleness and promise and peace and comfort to bring that same peace to others who are hurting. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need it to be a goose, to honk and make a racket and be persistent and annoying and to drive me out into the place where God is calling me. So we will all have an opportunity to do that later as we celebrate this day of Pentecost, the presence of the Spirit that sends us out. Amen. <clears throat>
Please stand for the sermon hymn. We'll have an offering hymn later on in the service. Sunday, it is a good opportunity to remember our baptism when the Holy Spirit was joined into us as we are joined into Christ's church. Uh, and as Christ church, and we share the mighty acts of salvation as we receive new birth in this water and offer the gifts that God has really given all of us. Let us renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledging that God is doing through and for us, and affirming our commitment to Christ's Holy Church. Do you renounce the evil forces of this world that will rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the devil and all the empty promises? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that might draw you away from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God? revealed his father i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth do you believe as god revealed as the son i believe in jesus christ god's only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, where he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You promise to proclaim outside these doors the good news of Jesus Christ in both word and example. I will, with God's help. Will you see and serve Christ and all people, loving your neighbor as you love God and as God has loved you, seeking justice for everyone and work for the respect of all individuals? I will, with God's help. Please bow your heads. Gracious God, through water and the Spirit, may all of us be sons and daughters in your kingdom. Renew in us this morning the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Let us rejoice in the promises that have been made today. Amen. Let us rejoice in God's love that has come to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rejoice in life everlasting that has been given to each of us. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray for those who need your spirit to minister and care for them now. Roginia, Phyllis, Kimberly, Susan, Jennifer, Sherry, Karen, Teresa, Mary, Ziva, Terry, or Sam, Jim, Sue. We pray for Tom Jones at the grief of losing his brother, Terry. We pray a celebration with Allison and Jared Murphy at the birth of their son, Mitchell. We pray for safety for all of the students on break right now in the summer. We pray on this Memorial Weekend all those who are in our congregation who serve in the armed forces, especially Paul Newell, Andrew Bailey, Nathan Moore, Dylan Thomas, Alexis Salad, Teddy Begro, and others named aloud now that need our prayers. Hear all these, Lord. Shelter them. Bring your spirit to them. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share God's love and God's peace with one another this morning. We have a, 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 a good gift on Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Cora is going to give us an anthem for us.
Lord, you've received these gifts of uh, talent and wealth and bread and wine that are brought before you. Bless them with your spirit so that we might go and be a blessing for you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, we pray this morning a prayer of thanksgiving for the creation that was given us life, for the new creation in the spirit that gives us life everlasting, and for the promises that you've made to each of us to walk with us, comfort us, care for us, and send us to be your people. We trust the promises of Jesus especially, those that he made on the night he was betrayed, where he took bread and broke it and gave thanks and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed and he gave for all to drink, saying, this cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we are proclaiming the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Delight us with your love. Fill us anew. Send us to be new wine in our broken world. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. our friends at home and those who are communing in their seats today with these communion kits. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Others will invite forward now. This is Christ's meal. You're invited to eat. Please come and eat with us.
strengthened to be your people now and forever. Amen. Uh, we have a uh, still busy day today for our worship director, Tyler. He's got his recital uh, in this space, in the space, uh, three o'clock, three o'clock, and it'll be live streamed. Uh, maybe, maybe live streamed. May you have to come to find out if it's live streamed. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to hear some of Tyler's talented uh, private students, they'll be here in this space today. Uh, VBS is going on, all sorts of ways to take part of that. That'll be in a few weeks. Uh, so take a, 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 a green thing of a job to, to bring some supplies or tell your grandkids or kids or neighbors and, and uh, let's make it a good party uh, here in June. Uh, we are also, um, next week is graduation Sunday. So if you have a high school senior, they'll be blessed here in this worship space. So we encourage you to to, to have that. And also, if you have a college graduate or a master's or any, a graduation you want to celebrate, we'll have that in our bulletins too. So please send all that in to Gabriel in our office for next Sunday. Uh, and uh, this is also a secular holiday. This is the uh, uh, weekend in our country where we celebrate and remember and give thanks for those who have given their lives uh, in our 250 year history of and the armed forces uh, fighting and, and, and battles and uh, uh, sacrificing so that we might have freedoms like worshiping today. So why don't we stand and we'll give a moment of silence and thanks.
Lord, we give thanks for the men and women who have died uh, for, this, for the sake of our country. We carry the heavy burden of grief for their sacrifice. And we pray your blessing that we might live into that sacrifice. Amen. Uh, and the last thing is, is we are uh, bringing forward the, the Christ candle. We're going to carry out the flame of the Holy Spirit at the end of our service. If I could have uh, Howard come forward. Did, did I lose Donna? Sophia, come here, honey. Come forward with Howard. So, Pastor Sherry, oh, I got to bend mine, don't I? Isn't that it? Pastor Sherry lit her candle off the Christ candle, uh, and all of your candles will be lit off that Christ candle as we go. Always uh, tip the unlit one. And uh, Sophia will come down on this side and Howard on that side. And at the very end of the song, what I want you to do is just come follow the cross out so that we all leave together carrying our flame of Christ, hide it under a bushel, oh no, uh, and be honking geese out in the world. Let us sing. Take your leaded flame home. Start a fire in my soul.